Hello everyone, well by now you'll have seen the Dyson DC40 unboxing video and you've also seen the glowing review I've given that particular Dyson upright cleaner. Well spurned on by my successes with that machine I decided to give another Dyson product the once over and I decided to plump for this model the Dyson Digital Slim DC35, sorry about the uh, reflection, it is still in its shrink wrap. I know it's the base model, at the time of making this video anyway, this is the sort of bottom of the range of the digital slims. It does lack the smaller motor head for doing your stairs and beds and stuff like that. It also I think has a bit less power than say the DC59. But I wanted to try the sort of the base model just to see how good that was and then possibly at a later date try the top model which at the moment is the DC59. I've heard good things about that. I've heard good things about this one as well. I used to have a Dyson handheld many years ago, one of the earlier ones before they did the digital slim variety. It was just the handheld but it did have a motorised head. I can't remember the model number but I know the Cyclone pack was uh, like a gold colour, goldy bronze colour, but a, a shiny sort of goldy bronze, I think anyway. I'll have to dig out, I've got a photo of it somewhere on one of my hard drives somewhere. But um, yeah, that was a while ago, so obviously they have improved since then. The runtime, I believe, has gone up, the power hopefully has gone up. Um, and also the performance. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get the shrink wrap off and see what's inside the box. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get the shrink wrap off. And then we'll see. I already know what's in the box, of course. I've seen enough unboxing videos and I've checked the website, of course. Right. That's phase one, the shrink wrap removed. Now, ah, there's a little bit of a seal. I like to see that. Whoops, I think that's everything. Come on, it's your time to shine. It's your moment, Dyson DC35. You have joined the ranks of all the other vacuum cleaners, carpet washers, etc. that have been unboxed on my channel and throughout YouTube. Now ah, look, mm, look at that, it's a little bit of a mess on the carpet. Now that's there for a purpose. I have been tidying up the room I'm in and um, getting rid of old paperwork and things. And because my shredder broke ages ago, I didn't bother replacing it and now all I do is cut out the address labels of anything and um, sort of cut them into little squares which is what I've been doing so there's quite just ahead of me there's quite a lot of these little squares so if there's enough charge in this uh, Dyson before it needs its full charge I could uh, have a go but anyway let's have a look here it is so being the base model, we don't get a fancy coloured tube. This is just your bog standard aluminium coloured tube. Seems quite strong and strong but light. Obviously you want it to be light because it is a lightweight cordless vacuum. You want it light for when you're cleaning the floors but you also want it light for when you're going up high to get rid of those cobwebs etc. So there is the tube, we have some cleaning tools, first cleaning tool is a crevice tool, a reasonable length, sort of an average, not too short, not too long, with the Dyson branding in the middle there, and all with the click fitting. So if you do have um, a Dyson cleaner that's not too old, any tools that fit your main Dyson should I believe fit your handheld because a lot of people 
They do buy a handheld Dyson to supplement their main vacuum and if it is a Dyson and you've forked out for extra tools for that then you can use it. I have got a couple of extra tools um, that I have with my Dyson DC40. Um, I'm assuming they're going to fit on this. I'll try that later in the video. Here's the combination tool. So you've got the brushes up and you've got sort of a small nozzle there with a small little red litter picker for hairs and threads. So you can use it like that for your curtains, your upholstery, car seats, that sort of thing. But for dusting jobs you can pull the brush forward and you've got quite a nice soft dusting brush for dusting your shelves, your computer keyboards, tops of skirting boards and of course you can connect that directly to the unit itself or if you do want to reach up high with it we can connect it onto the hose end like that so it's not only for low down it's for high up as well. So there's that combi tool and I think yes that's all the tools you get with this model because it's a base model I don't get the motorized mini turbo nozzle but I knew that so here we have the charger obviously because this is a UK model and I am in the UK it's got a UK three pinned plug that's all wrapped up see if I can that's it. take that off and there seems to be a little LED I assume that's a green LED so when that's plugged in and charging the handheld that will glow I'm assuming so you can actually charge the machine directly using that I believe or put it in the dock speaking of the dock here it is you can wall mount this you don't have to use it I don't think I will use the dock I've nowhere suitable really that I want to wall mount it but if you have um, somewhere in your kitchen or your, your utility room where you want to keep this on the wall fully charged that's probably the most convenient thing to do because of course you can have it always at hand sitting on there charging up with the wand and the main nozzle connected and then your small cleaning tools will fit Oops, there we go. will fit just underneath but of course you don't have to put those tools on if you have like I say any other Dyson tools that you use more than say these tools then you can of course put whatever tools you want to on there, the docking station and where do you plug it in? There'll be somewhere there are some instructions some separate instructions just underneath I'm sure I think you put the uh, probably put the cable into that if you were to use it but like I say you have to feed the cable up, up and along up here. It's all in the instructions anyway, it shows you where to feed the cable if you want to use use the docking station. But like I say, if you don't have anywhere you want to put it on the wall, you can just charge it up like you charge up your mobile phone just on your worktop next to a convenient socket using your charger. So here we have all the literature, the guarantee form. Now unlike Dyson's mains powered cleaners, their cordless machines have a two year guarantee as opposed to a five year guarantee. So we've got the little booklet, the story of Dyson, talking about his early designs, his sea track, his ball barrow, etc. One of his earliest uprights. That was before the G-Force, that was before the DC-01, which was his main, his first, I believe, his first sort of mass market. I think Japan got this, but certainly in the UK, his first mass market upright was the DC-01, which is, is it that? Oh, it's there, isn't it? That's the DC-01. And then we go on to see what he's done with his balls, his digital motor, 
his air blade technology, etc. A little bit of history. There's the uh, registration address. We need to send the guarantee off, or it's easy enough to do online. I've just registered my DC40 online. And here, pretty familiar Dyson tool, uh, not tools, instruction book. Ah, oh, I was correct. The, there is a green light on the charger. It shows you when it's charging. So it will be on when it's charging. When it's fully charged, it turns off. And when it's flashing, it's too hot or cold to charge. So obviously you don't charge the battery in that state. So looks pretty simple. Click, click, click together. Washing the filters, obviously important, at least every month, Dyson say, but I would say, in addition to that, depending how often you use the machine, you might find every two weeks, or even if you hardly use the machine, every couple of months, but probably this is the sort of machine you will be using maybe more often than you'd use your main machine. That's one of the reasons I think people like these vacuums because they can just grab them at a moment's notice providing they're charged and just whip out the out the machine and just get rid of those little dust bunnies etc. So here is the motorised floor head. It's different of course to the one that comes with the DC-59. It's one reason I wanted to to try this, it's narrower. So it's still, it's large enough to whip over your carpet, but it's narrow enough to do your stairs with, and even your mattress you could do with that nozzle. And some upholstered furniture, as long as it's not got any loose covers, you could, you could do your sofa with that as well. So it's got the carbon fiber brushes, the black brushes are the carbon fibre, very soft, but they are designed to clean hard floors, including the very fine dust on hard floors. And the red, stiffer brushes are designed for cleaning your carpets. But they work in tandem, so obviously you use the machine, you can just go on from carpets to hard floors. Unlike some uprights where you have to turn the brush off for your hard floor, of course that rem remains spinning. So it's basically you go from carpet to hard floor, no changing of settings, no unplugging or plugging in. You've got this purple plush pad, blue or purple, depending on what it looks like. On my monitor it looks blue, to my naked eye it looks purple. I'm not sure what colour it's going to look like when you see it on YouTube, but it's, it looks purple in real life. Then there's another a red litter picker strip. And then a couple of little ones there to help to compensate for the fact that there's a belt here. I assume it's the belt or it's part of the motor, I'm not sure. But anyway, there's a little uncleaned part obviously there. doesn't get quite up full width brushing. There's also a little bit there that's not full width. I do believe the DC-59 is a better head in the fact that it has, I believe it's much better full width brushing. I think... It's got some little wheels as well to help with the manoeuvrability and this sort of ball joint so that rotates that goes up and down You've got these two wheels that are very like the wheels on the ball uprights well and on the ball cylinders so it's it feels fairly weighty but not too weighty obviously it will add to the weight of the machine but not when you're using it in upright because obviously it's going to be on the floor but when you're using it on stairs You'll have to factor that in, but it's still very light. It's just a little sticker on there. It just says carbon fibre filaments. Anti-static to remove fine dust from hard floors. It just needs to be removed. So let's pop that down there for now. And I think the only other thing to get at is the machine itself. The DC-35. So here it is, quite a nice sort of metallic blue finish on the cyclones there. Certainly seems an improvement on the one, it is a several years since I had my Dyson handheld 
so I can't I can't make a direct comparison. Possibly it's lighter, I'm not sure. I know mine didn't have this max button, which you press in, it gives you an extra boost of power, but it does reduce the battery life to six minutes, I believe. I think there should be some charge in here, let's see. Yes, and that is a good, that's a good suction. I'm not sure if that was on max. I think it was. So that's on regular. And then I have to press the max button in, which will illuminate. That does increase it considerably. And you can see that illuminates, but also the light on the top illuminates. Does that illuminate as well when you have max? That illuminates as well. I believe that will flash. I think it flashes when you've got about a minute's left. So only that light lights up when you've got it on regular. But when you have it on max, they both light up. So it is sort of like, you know, it is a bit like a weapon, isn't it, really? But it is, that's what it is, exactly what it is. It's a weapon against household dirt. Ta -da. Right, I think that's everything. Again, fairly environmentally friendly packaging from Dyson. No polystyrene. Obviously, we've got some plastic bags, but uh, everything else I would have thought could be recycled at your curbside. Most councils collect that sort of cardboard. Or, or if you like me, keep the box. I always like to keep the boxes of most things I buy, just in case I move house. And uh, I just like to keep things nice and secure and safe if they're being transported. So it's of course typical Dyson packaging showing you all the internal gubbins. There we go. Powered by the Dyson Digital Motor V V2 lithium ion battery. So this fade free cleaning, not like the old NICAD type batteries that would sort of start to fizzle out and then just start okay and then they go Ooh. this one just stops dead when it's needing charging but of course it will give you that warning this is what um, the motorized head is supposed to do for you uh, especially with fine particles I'll be doing a full test of this machine of course and I'll be testing it on hard floors using fine particles which would be I think flour would be the best thing to test you can see that a regular head, and I've experienced this, it does leave fine dust behind, but this is what the carbon fibre filaments are supposed to remove. I've seen many demos of this cleaner and the other digital slims on various shopping channels, and they, they often show cleaning up fine dust, white dust, on a shiny black surface, and it is pretty impressive. Okay, let's have a look at the machine itself. So yes, it, it is light, fairly well balanced. This is where the battery is. And let's have a look. Yes, it's fixed now. Certainly on the model I had, you could take the battery out. But I do remember seeing a YouTube video that um, there was a problem with the batteries that removed. It used to cut power off or something and to fix it, you'd have to take the battery out and possibly clean the contents, uh, contact, sorry, and put the battery back. But Dyson have done away with that function of being able to remove it, but I hope that you could still, if I need to buy a replacement battery, I hope that's something I can still do myself with a screwdriver perhaps, I'm not sure. Looks like that that's the hole where I'll charge it. Let's just see, I think that would be it. Obviously I've not looked at the instructions properly yet. Let's just plug plug that charger in. Like that. It's quite a nice nice long cable. I'd say that's more than a metre, possibly about a metre and a half, so you don't have to be that close to your socket. Yes. That's where you charge it. Now, when you're charging it this way, there's no this doesn't light up. 
it only lights up on the actual charger. I can see there's a green light now showing. But I will charge that up until the light goes out before I do a full proper test on this, but there is some charge, not sure how much, but there's enough charge for me to have a little go. Because obviously when you buy something like this you want to be cleaning straight away. So there's the trigger in red, which used to operate the machine. Obviously it more or less cuts out as soon as you release the trigger to conserve battery. Some people have complained about this type of machine, the fact you have to keep your hand or your, your finger always on the trigger to operate the machine, but obviously Dice have done that to conserve the battery life. But to me it's not difficult to do. Some people who may have dexterity problems might have trouble keeping that held, I'm not sure. But I think for most people you wouldn't find that a problem that you have to keep, keep your finger on that grip. So here is the bagless bin. This red lever here is what you push down to release the dust. And unlike a lot of vacuums, bagless vacuums that I unbox from you, that worked first time. Often it might take a few times for it to open, but ah. Oh. <laughs> Right on cue, I'll try. <laughs> it didn't open. You open the first time, didn't open the second time. Or the third, anyway, it will. It, it will loosen up as time goes by. Obviously, this is where you put either your nozzles directly in, crevice nozzle or your dual purpose nozzle. Just nice click fitting. I like that system where it's very secure until you press the button almost popped out then didn't it so this pops out really easily and of course this is where you'd attach the wand for high and low cleaning but as I said you don't have to just attach the carbon fibre head onto the wand you can put it directly which is why I liked this now it's still compact and light enough and of course when you're using it like this on your stairs for example most of the weight at the moment it feels a bit weighty but obviously when you're using it the weight is supported you just have to obviously be having to lift it up the stairs Oops, I missed that bit. Let's try try and go for that little bit there. So, feels feels quite good. It feels like there is some sort of agitation. Of course, it just stops instantly. The battery will last longer, of course, when you're not using the motorised head, when you're using it just suction only, because obviously this has a motor in it as well, which will drain the battery. That seems quite good. Don't suppose there won't be much in this hardly, well there's nothing really in there. I've, I've just, before I made this video, I did vacuum this area where I am with a Dyson DC40. So I wasn't expecting there to be anything in that bin, there isn't. But don't worry, I will be fully testing this machine. To access the filter, we've got this little blue button on the top that says filter. So if you press that, we can remove the whole bin. And then we've got the motor unit. Here is the filter. Just pull that off. Clean that under running water. Squeeze it out, leave it to dry. 24 hours and when it's thoroughly dry, only when it's thoroughly dry, put it back in your machine. Under there, that's where we've got behind that grill there is the digital motor. And of course we've got the serial number and everything, so if you need to register your guarantee and you don't know where the serial number is, that's where it is on mine anyway, behind the filter, so it's probably that's where it is on your one. So once the filter's 
been washed. For example, we'll put it back. You can look at the bin in a bit more detail. Now I'm not sure not sure if we can take anything out of this bin if we want to give it a thorough clean. Obviously with the main full-size Dysons you can sort of take bits out but I'm not sure you can on this. I'll just check the instruction book quickly. Um, so it's just saying that on boost mode it gives a maximum of six minutes on regular well, it's, yes, it says six, on boost mode, it says in here, it gives you six minutes whether you're using the power head or the straight suction nozzles. On regular mode, you're getting 13 minutes with the power head or 15 without. So it's only two minutes difference. So it's showing us how to wash the filters. Oh, it's, it's saying only 12 hours. But if you can leave it, well leave it as long as you can, but as long as it's dry before you put it back you'll be okay. No, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any way, any way that Dyson tell you to, anyway, any way of sort of taking this apart. Could be wrong. There will be a way of dismantling it a bit more if you wanted to. It looks like it needs a specialist screwdriver though. So you can sort of clean that out with a cloth if you need to, but it doesn't seem to be able to remove this middle shroud. I wonder if you can on the later models, I don't know. That would be useful. So how does that go on? That's it. You locate it. You locate it sort of like this, I think. That's it. Push until the blue button clicks. So, I wonder if it goes on maximum di by default. I'm not sure. Well, all in all, so far, without giving it a proper going over, it seems seems pretty good. Let's connect the motorized nozzle to the end of the wand. I do like the Dyson click. Um, something very satisfying about that. The way the tools and the bits and pieces click together and unclick. Oops, oops. Move that so you can see it. So I'm going to connect the wand now. Obviously, just under the suction inlet, there's two holes, and they need to marry up with the two pins or prongs. There you go. In the extension wand, because obviously it needs to carry the electric power to the motor head. And click that in. Click. Nice firm click, and there we have it in upright mode. And if I stand up, my legs have gone to sleep. Oh, right, it's quite tall actually. I'm quite surprised how tall it is. Well, there's a couple of bits. Obviously, I'd be sending it back if it wouldn't pick those up. But anyway, just under my camera, I've got uh, a bit of debris, just some paper cutting. So I'm just going to clear that up just as an initial test. But I will be doing my full review shortly. So I'll turn it on first. If it goes on max when I first turn it on, I'll, I'll press the button again just to make sure it's in regular mode. So that's on regular mode, but there's a couple of bits. Ah, now that's good. I wasn't expecting it to be as low as that. That's actually gone under that piece of furniture. 
because I've missed those two bits, but because the head's so slim, I can get those bits. Can't quite get every little piece. So, let's just take off the wand, and then I can just attach the crevice to all. I'll just get those couple of bits. And now, just going to clean up the rest of that bit of paper, but this time in max mode. So I'll press the max button at the back. certainly makes a difference in max mode, it just, it just feels, obviously there is more suction, you can feel it sort of digging a bit more into the carpet than you can on the regular mode, but of course for the better performance we sacrifice some run time. Now just earlier on I thought there was no way of taking off the bin in order for you to clean the inner shroud but after checking the instructions, I find out you can. I thought you could. I seem to remember being able to do it with my earlier model, so I thought you must be able to. So you can. So the easiest way to do it, I've just found. First of all, I'm gonna take the motor. You don't have to, but for ease of handling and certainly for ease of me showing you, I'm taking the motor unit off by pressing the filter button, putting that to one side. So the first thing we need to do is just open the bin flap pushing down there and then underneath we have a little red button here so you need to press that hang on a minute there we go press it like press it like that and then we can release the bin by pulling it forward now we've got complete access to the inner shroud so if you need to clean that after you know, a certain amount of use, you might find that there's hairs or other debris stuck around the shroud. You obviously want to keep that clear for optimum performance. So you can give that a wipe with a damp cloth, make sure it's dry of course. Or if you've got another Dyson to hand, use the dusting attachment and give that a good clean. And while you have the bin out, you could give that a wipe over as well with the damp cloth. Again, make sure it's dry. Do not submerse that in water. Now with some of the earlier models, without the motorhead, you possibly could have done that without too much trouble. But because this one has current carrying conductors in it, you do not want to get water in there. You probably, because it's not mains, you might not get a shock from it, but it won't do it any good. So do not submerse that in water, whatever you do. Again, look, there's contacts on the back wipe it, damp cloth, but keep any moisture away from the electrical contacts. So, right, you've given it a good clean, you've got the cyclone unit, you've got the bin, so you need to now, you've got, there's a little lug just there, you need to marry that up with a little slot near the front. So obviously, it's normally, that's it, it's fairly easy to do. So now it's in. Now I just need to push the bin back until it clicks, which it has done. Then I can close the flap at the bottom and then locate the motor unit back onto the bin unit like that. Now it should be working fine. Well, that's uh, about the end of my unboxing and first look at the Dyson DC35 digital slim cordless bagless vacuum cleaner. First impressions are positive. It seems to have enough suction. It's light, not too noisy. But of course, I've just owned this for a few minutes and I can't judge a vacuum cleaner 
on a few minutes ownership I've got to of course give it the full test all around my house and I will be I'll be putting this Dyson through its paces after I've given it its full charge I think believe it takes about three hours for the full charge I'm not sure how much charge is in the battery when you get it enough obviously for me to show you how it works but probably not enough um, for a full clean for the full run time so I will be charging it up and coming back to it later. So after a week or so of me really trying this machine out, I will be obviously making a video and I'll be uploading it to this channel. So if you want to see it, please subscribe and you'll be updated as soon as I upload the full review of this Dyson Digital Slim. So until then, it's goodbye and I'll see you soon.